So in this video, I would like to talk about uh, discrete and continuous probability spaces. So remember that a probability space uh, consists of two things. One uh, is the sample space S, which is a set of all possible outcomes. And then uh, we have the probability function that assigns uh, uh, probabilities to events and events are subsets of the sample space so for example if a is a subset of s a could be an event and probability of a is a number between 0 and 1 and we discussed that probability must satisfy three axioms um, first axiom 1 is that probability of any event must be larger than or equal to 0 axiom 2 stated that probability of the whole sample space must be equal to 1. And axiom 3 uh, said that if I have a bunch of disjoint events, then the probability of their union is equal to the summation of their probabilities. And we said that union is the same as OR. Okay, so if you look at your sample space, there are two possibilities. Either your sam sample space is a countable set, uh, which means that we can list all the elements in the set. So any finite set is a countable set or any set like the set of natural numbers or set of integers is a countable set. In these uh, situations, we say that we have a discrete probability space. For example, when you roll a die, then your outcomes uh, are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are only a finite number of uh, outcomes and uh, you know that your sample space is a countable set. On the other hand, there are situations in which your um, you know, sample space is, for example, uh, all the real numbers between 1 and 2, right? In these situations, uh, you know, we say that we have a continuous probability space. So why, why are we making this dis distinction? Uh, the point is that when you have a, you know, discrete probability space, we usually, you know, use summation to s find probabilities. On the other hand, when you have a continuous probability space, we need to use integrals. So an example of a situation when you have a continuous sample space, let's say you buy a computer and you are looking at uh, its lifetime, how long your computer lasts. Well, in theory, um, your computer could last any positive real number. So in that example, you could say that your sample space is all positive real numbers. And of course, um, you know, uh, this is an uncountable set. And in this situation, we have a continuous uh, probability space. So in this course, we would like to start with uh, discrete probability spaces which, because they are somewhat easier. And then we, later on, we talk about continuous probability spaces, specifically when we talk about continuous random variables. Uh, today, I just uh, provide a very brief introduction to continuous probability spaces. OK, so let's talk about discrete probability spaces. So let's start with a simple example. Let's say, you know, I roll a die. So what's my sample space here? Well, of course, the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And let's say I'm interested in the probability that the outcome is an even number. So let's A be the, the event consisting of uh, six element, uh, th three elements, 2, 4, and 6. Now, uh, how do I find the probability of A? Well, what I can do, I can write A as uh, a set that contains element 2, union, a set that contains element 4, union, a set that contains only element 6. And we note that these are disjoint sets, which means that they don't share any elements. We can write probability of A as a probability of the union of these uh, sets, but because they are disjoint, because of the third axiom of probability, this is equal to probability of the first event plus probability of the second event plus probability of the third event. And we usually we simplify the notation, we just write probability of 2 plus probability of 4 plus probability of 6. So basically, we remove the brackets here. So when you have a discrete probability space, uh, because you can list all the elements, you can find probability of any event by summing the probabilities of individual outcomes. So I can provide a general scenario if you have a discrete probability space and you are interested in a probability of an event A. Let's say A, ha you know, we can list all the elements in A, A1, A2, A3. Then you can write probability of A uh, equals probability of the first outcome plus probability of the second outcome and so on. So this is our general uh, formula uh, for, to find probability of events uh, in a discrete probability space. Okay, so let's look at an example. 
So in this example, I play a gambling game in which I uh, will win k minus two dollars with probability one over two to the k for k equals one, two, three, and so on. So if I want to summarize the situation, the probability that I win k minus two dollars is equal to one uh, over two to the k for k equals one, two, three, and so on. So let's say if k equals one, then uh, probability of minus one becomes one over two, which is the probability that I win minus one dollar. Basically, it's the probability that I lose one dollar. Uh, if I put k equals two, I obtain probability two minus two zero equals uh, one over four to the two, and so on. Probability of one becomes one over eight. Probability of two becomes uh, one over sixteen, uh, and so on. Probability of three becomes one over thirty-two, and so on. Now the question is, what is the probability that I win more than one dollar and less than four dollars? So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution to this problem. Well, so here, what is my sample space, by the way? My sample space, uh, well, uh, I might lose one dollar, uh, which, you know, the outcome might be minus one. I might win zero dollar. I might win one dollar. I might win two dollars and so on. So that's all the possible outcomes. Uh, of this basically random experiment. Now, before solving the problem, it's a good idea to check if this is a valid probability model. In other words, for example, is it true that probability of the entire sample space is equal to one? Well, let's check that. Um, so what is uh, so probability of the entire sample space? Uh, remember, this is a discrete uh, probability space. So probability of S is just a summation of the probabilities in the uh, set S. So this is equal to probability of minus one plus probability of zero plus probability of one and so on. Now, what is probability of minus 1? Uh, well, we know that it's equal to 1 over 2. What is probability of 0 is uh, 1 over 4, and probability of 1 is 1 over 8, and so on. And this is a geometric sum, and uh, if probability of C negative 4, this, equal, this equals 1. So, we check that, and uh, the probability of the entire sample space is equal to 1. So, now let's uh, solve the problem. Uh, the problem asks us what is the probability that I win more than one dollar and less than four dollars. So we are interested in the outcome that uh, the amount that I win is larger than one, so it might be two uh, and less than uh, four, so it's two one and three. Now, how do I find probability of A? Again, this is a finite uh, you know event. And we have a discrete probability space, so probability of A is just simply probability of two plus probability of three. And uh, probability of 2 is uh, 1 over 16, probability of 3 is 1 over 32, and that becomes uh, 3 over 32. Uh, now I would like to talk about a very important special class of discrete probability spaces. In particular, I want to talk about uh, scenarios in which you have a finite sample space uh, with equally likely outcomes. So we have a finite sample space, we have a finite sample space with equally, equally likely outcomes. So let's put this in the box. So, and this is a scenario that, you know, might happen uh, in some uh, problems. Uh, and a simple example of that, when you have, a, you roll a die, right? You roll a die, then you have uh, six possible outcomes. And if you, the die is fair, that means that all uh, outcomes are equally likely. So what does equally likely mean? It means that probability of 1 is equal to probability of 2 is equal to probability of 3 is equal to probability of 4, 5, and 6. Now, because they are equally likely, we can actually find uh, the probability of each of them. We note that 1 is equal to probability of the entire sample space, and probability of the entire sample space is equal to probability of 1 plus probability of 2 up to probability of 6. And because they are e equal, this becomes 6 times probability of 1, and probability of 1 becomes 1 over 6. And this is, of course, uh, equal to probability of 2 equals probability of 3 equals probability of 6. Um, so if I have an event in this uh, sample space and I want to find its probability, let's say, you know, event A, I'm interested in the event that the outcome is an even number. What I can do, I can just write probability of A is equal to probability of 2 plus probability of 4 plus probability of 6. And because, uh, you know, 
all of them are 1 over 6, the result is 1 over uh, 3 over 6. So the probability of A becomes 3 over 6. Note that this 3 here is the number of elements in A. That's the notation that we use for the number of elements in A. Uh, and this 6 is the number of elements in uh, your sample space S. So uh, we have a general rule in these uh, problems. When I have a finite sample space S and where all outcomes are equally likely, so these two conditions are important here, then the probability of any event A is obtained by the number of elements in A divided by the number of elements in S. So this is the number of elements in A and this is the number of elements in S. So that's our general rule uh, for problems in which we have a finite sample space with equally likely outcomes. Okay, so let's look at an example. So the example is this. I roll a fair die twice and obtain two numbers. X1 is a result of the first roll. So X1 is basically a number between you know, 1 and 6, 1, 2, up to 6. Uh, and uh, X2 is a result of the second roll. So the question is, write down the sample space S and assuming that all the outcomes are equally likely, find the probability of the event A defined as uh, the event that x1 plus x2 is equal to 8. So I suggest that you solve this problem before watching the rest of the video. Okay, so let's look at the solution. Um, in this example, first of all, let's write, uh, write down the sample space. So, well, we get two, we get two numbers, so x1 and x2, um, such that x1 and x2, uh, both of them belong to the set 1, 2, 3, uh, up to 6, right? And these are ordered pairs, so x1 and x2. That's why I put it like in this parenthesis here. Uh, so specifically, let's write down s. So well, it could be the case that we get 1 and 1. We might get 1 and 2. And, you know, either 2 and 1, 2, 2. Sorry, this is 2, 6, and up to 6, 6. So I'm just listing all the possibilities, 1, 1, up to 6, 6. And if you count all of these, you will find out that there are 36 elements in S. So the total number of elements in this sample space is equal to 36. Now, let's write down event A. Event A is the event that the you know x1 plus x2 is equal to 8. In other words, event A can be written as all pairs x1 and x2 that are you know in s in the sample space such that x1 plus x2 is equal to 8 now let's see what are the possibilities here well then a is if um, x1 is equal to 1 x2 must be 7 that's not possible so if x1 is equal to 2 then x2 becomes 6 uh, 3 5 4 4 5 3 and 6 2 that's all the elements that are in A. Basically, that's all, all x1s and x2 uh, in S, such that their summation is equal to 8. So this is an equally likely space, um, which means that probability of the event A can be written as the number of elements in A divided by the total number of elements in uh, S. There are five elements in A. There are 36 elements in S. So that is uh, the probability of A, 5 over 36. Okay, now I would like to spend a few minutes to talk about continuous uh, probability spaces. So we want to talk about we're going to talk about this uh, in uh, detail when we talk about continuous random variables. But I just want to provide a very brief uh, introduction here. So let's look at a very simple example. Suppose that I have a unit square, which means that I have a square with area one. So this is one, this is one, and then I do this random experiment. So this square is my uh, sample space. Now what I do, I pick a point at random in the unit square, completely at random, uniformly at random. And my question for you is that if I have a set A, what is the probability that my point is in that set A? Well, you might argue that because uh, you know I choose this point completely at random, probability that that point belongs to a set A must be proportional to the area of A. So in other words, you are suggesting that probability of any set is equal to 
the area of that set divided by the area of the entire square and because in this case I assume the area of the entire square is equal to 1 uh, this is equal to area of A so in particular if I ask you what is uh, the probability that I pick this specific point here you will say that well the area of this specific point is zero right any point has area zero so the probability of any individual point is going to be zero for example let's uh, you know in the example that we discussed previously if you buy a laptop and you are interested in it, its lifetime you know you want to see how long your laptop lasts then you will say that probability that your laptop will last exactly any real number let's say square root five uh, years that's going to be zero so instead of talking about uh, probabilities like this, you are usually interested in the probability of intervals or, uh, you, know, inter you know, areas on the plane. So you might say that what's the probability that my, my laptop lasts between one and two years? Um, so we're going to talk about this uh, much more in detail. Now, I just want to mention this point here. So we found that the probability of A here must be the area of A. And if you remember from your calculus, uh, to find an area, we usually need to integrate. That's why uh, when we talk about continuous probability spaces, we need to, you know, work with integrals and so on. And that was a simple case. You know, we assume that all areas are uniformly chosen, you know, have the same chance of being chosen. It might be the case that you, for example, you argue that, uh, you know, points in the middle are more likely to be chosen. So in some sense, we need to define probability density and so on. And again, uh, we will discuss all of these things when we talk about uh, continuous random variables. Okay, thank you.